Hi, I'm Savannah, and this is... Isabella. And today we are covering on our podcast the our first episode, The Zodiac Killer, who terrorized Southern California and maybe Nevada for about five years. So I guess there's no way to put this down gently, but he was kind of a psychopath who killed about seven-ish people and claimed to kill 35, or 37. 37 people, that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. I could fit 37 people in a bus. That's, that's a lot of people. Yeah, that's like a whole case right there. That's a whole, like, school, like a tiny school, I guess. Yeah, basically. That's a whole kindergarten grade. Yeah. Okay, his first crime was December 20th of 1968 in California at 11, around 11 p.m. David Farday and Betty Lou Jensen were shot and killed in a parked car in a gravel parking lot. When police arrived, Betty was found dead 30 feet away from the car, and David was still alive, but died on his way to the hospital. Nobody knew at this time that this was the work of a serial killer. At, on his, his second crime was July 4th of 1969. The Zodiac approached a car with a flashlight, shooting Darlene Farron and Michael McGeehu. He left before coming back, shooting them both again. Both were alive, but only McGeehu would survive. He described the face of his killer. He was a young white male, 25 to 30 years old, stocky, 200 pounds or larger, about 5 foot 8, light curly brown hair, and a large face. An hour later, someone called the police claiming to be the killer of the aforementioned murders. On August 1st of 1969, the San Francisco Chronicle, the San Francisco Examiner, and the Vallejo Times Herald got letters exactly written by someone claiming to be the killer. He started fa- he stated facts that only him and the police knew. They were all signed with the infamous zodiac mark, a circle with a cross through it. Also included were three different codes. He demanded be put in newspapers, threatening to kill again if he didn't. They claimed it would reveal his identity. Three days later, on August 4th, another letter was re- revealed. It started with the, this is, it began with, this is the Zodiac speaking, the first time he had ever referred to himself to that name. On August 8th, August 8th the, zo- the code was cracked by a couple in California. The code read, and I'm just going to give a bit of a warning here, it is um, not the nicest thing I've ever read. <laughs> It's, uh, pretty, um, dark. Quote, I like killing because it's so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all to kill. Something gives me the most thrilling experience. It's even better than getting your rocks off with a girl because the best part of it is when I die, I will be reborn in paradise and those I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try and slow down or stop my collecting of slaves for the afterlife. End quote. There is so much grammatically wrong with that sentence, or that paragraph. Run-on sentences are everywhere. What do you think? Yeah, that's kind of creepy. Um. Also, how do you... Who told him that when you kill people, you'll be reborn in paradise, and those you have killed will become your slaves? Who told him that? I don't know. Probably some other psychopath. Do you, do you think psychopaths have, like, a meeting, like, every month? Like, they just get together and talk about their crimes? Honestly, I think that. Now that there's corona, now that there's corona they have Zoom meetings? Yeah, like, little tiny, like, book clubs. Get Maybe, togethers? You know how, like, people write books about serial killers? Maybe they have, like, they'll read their books and talk about how accurate they are? That's, that's, honestly, I can see that happening. <laughs> On September 27th of 1969 in Lake Berryessa, 22-year-old Celicia Shepard and 20-year-old Brian Hartnell were picnicking when Shepard saw a man hiding behind a tree, staring at her. The man came out wearing an execution-style hood over his head with the, with the Zodiac symbol on his chest. He had a gun and a long knife and pre-cut rope trying to st- tying them up and stabbing them repeatedly. So, um, Shepard would survive... Or, or would die at the hospital, but Brian would survive despite being stabbed six times in the back. His description of the person who attempted to kill him was, why does my, keep, why does my phone keep trying to shut off? 
His description was 5 foot 8 to 6 foot, heavy set, 225 to 250 pounds, dark brown hair. There was a message on the side of the car with the dates of all the killings and below it saying by knife and charcoal paint along with the zodiac sign. That's creepy. That's, he straight up attempted to kill two people, left them there tied up, and then took some Michael's paint and wrote on the side of their car. That's like, first, third degree murder, like first degree murder, two counts of it, and then violation of hurting someone's car. Yeah, like, okay, it's bad enough you attempted to murder them, but now you're ruining their car. On Things Octo- cost money. Yeah. On October 11th, ni- 1969, Paul Stein was shot in the head by a passenger. A teenage girl heard what was going on and got a look at the man as he walked away like it was nothing. He descri- she described the man as a white male, 25 to 30 years old, Five foot eight to five foot nine, stocky, a reddish brown crew cut, and heavy rimmed glasses. A cop nearby came to take a look at the crime scene. Although, with all the chaos they heard from dispatch, they heard from dispatch incorrectly identifying him as an African American male. What? That's weird. Like, I get that the scene is probably chaotic because they just watched someone get murdered. But, like, how do you incorrectly identify someone as an African-American male? You don't just, like... But this is the worst part. That inc- that incorrect identification would have a cost to pay, as in the cops, Donald Folk, and Eric Zelms would come up on a white male who looked like the man the teenage girl witness saw. But because they were searching for an African-American male, they left the man alone, watching him disappear into the park. The Zodiac would later mention this in one of his letters, saying, two co- quote, two cops pulled a goof about three minutes after I left the cab, end quote. They sketched up a, a famous wanted poster, which is now one of the mo- most famous wanted posters of the Zodiac. Another piece of evidence was a bloody fingerprint, but was later claimed a fake to, thro- to quote, throw the cops off his tracks, end quote, as the, do- that, as the Zodiac would say in one of his letters. Two days later, they got another letter that claimed the murder of that claims to be the murderer of Paul Stein, and also had a cut-off piece of Paul's shirt. He also said, again, not the nicest thing I've ever read, school children make nice targets. I think I shall wipe out a, sc- a school bus some morning, just shoot out the front tire, and then pick off the kitties as they come bouncing out. He also included... Well, he di- children. He- I mean, people. That's what I meant. Sorry. He also included diagrams for bombs, because a Zodiac task force was created. That's not okay. Like not one bit. On April twentieth, nineteen seventy, a letter was sent with those with a cipher that said "My name is," which would later na- narrow down potential suspects. The Zodiac would continue to se- sending letters till nineteen seventy one, only to send his last letter in nineteen seventy four, where he claimed to have killed thirty seven people, and bizarrely reviewed the movie The Exorcist, saying it was. Quote, the best satirical comedy that I have ever, I've ever seen. Don't know why he decided to write a Rotten Tomatoes review in his last letter about a movie, but. That's, um, okay. (laughs) I mean, he wrote a, like, a review, like, I think. Personally, I believe that he just didn't have any. He just doesn't have any friends, so the only people he can talk to are like the press and the police. So he has to like get his thoughts yeah. out somehow. In two thousand, mm-hmm. in two thousand and two, some DNA was contracted from one of his letters. It wasn't enough to narrow down to one person, but it was enough to eliminate suspects. Our first theory is from a man named Gary Stewart, who believes his father, Earl Van Best Jr., was a Zodiac killer. Gary Stewart published a book called The Most Dangerous Killer of All that presented this theory. Earl Van Best Jr. looks a lot like the the sketch from the Paul Stein murder. His name also matches the My Name Is cipher. Finally, Stewart says his handwriting is virtually certain to the Zodiac's handwriting and that the writing on Earl's Earl's marriage certificate, although I disagree because it was... I disagree because the handwriting that was virtually certain wasn't his and was in fact the priest's, that making the piece of evidence untrue. 
Also, he only matches the Paul Stein killing sketch, not the heavy set, large face description in the previous three killings. Gary Stewart tried to test his, his DNA against the tried against his father's DNA against the DNA from the letter, but investigators denied, saying it wasn't enough evidence. Stewart calls this a police cover up. What do you think of that theory? Personally, I don't believe in that theory. I don't believe it either because it just doesn't sound right. It's weird and I don't know. It's very weird. Personally, I think this dude just wants attention. That's why he wrote a book. Yeah. Plus, we all blame someone else for a crime someone else did. Also, you have to remember that his the first three killings, he was described as a large face, heavy set guy with like brown hair. And now, in the Paul Stein murder, he had a, a crew cut and like reddish hair. So, do you Thank think? You d- hear me out. Do you think that it could have been more than one person? It could have been, but it could have been because I don't think. I mean, it's possible, but why would I mean? How would one person kill thirty seven people? Maybe he just didn't have anything else to do with his time, and he just killed. Yeah, true. But the second the second theory comes from a man, Robert Graysmith, who believes Arthur Lee Allen is the Zodiac Killer. This theory was heavily implied in the 2007 movie, The Zodiac. Graysmith was a political cartoonist who became obsessed with finding the Zodiac. Graysmith wrote two Zodiac books, heavily implying Arthur is the killer. The day of the third Zodiac Killer um, murder... At Lake Berryessa, Arthur said he was going scuba diving at that day. He came home covered in blood, and he had a, ne- a bloody knife in his car. Two years later, a friend of Alan's, Don Chenney, said Alan called himself the Zodiac before the killer did. Also said he plan- He also said he planned to hunt people with a gun and a flashlight. I don't understand that because ha- do you just like tell people that you're gonna hunt someone yeah, with? Why a- would you like- Help people. That makes no sense. Like, we're friends, but I wouldn't tell you if I was going to kill someone. I wouldn't tell you. Like, yeah, like if I'm going to murder you in tomorrow night, I wouldn't be like, hey, I'm going to murder you tomorrow night. Yeah, you wouldn't give me, like, a heads up. You'd be like, you wouldn't. This no, is... I would not. No. Alan would be interviewed a second time where he said his favorite book was The Most Dangerous Game, a book about a man hunting humans. And a book referenced by the Zodiac Killer in his first letter. Also, Arthur was wearing a Zodiac brand watch, which was the same symbol as the as the killer used. In 1974, Allen was convicted of child molestation, for which he spent three years in jail. No letters were sent during that time. So... Do you think maybe no letters were sent on purpose, just so they think... She was murdered. I mean, he. I don't know. Yeah, that could be. That could be true. That actually is not. That actually, I didn't think of that. That was not something that, that crossed my mind. Ralph Spittle, an inmate at the jail, Allen was told, Allen was in, told police that he actually confessed to being the murderer of Paul Stein. Detective George. Award interviews Michael McGeo, the second Zodiac, the Zodiac attack survivor, and saw the Zodiac without his mask on. When shown the line of photos, Arthur said he was the one who attempted to murder him. With this information, they searched Alan's home a second time, finding formulas for bombs, constructed bombs, and tapes about the Zodiac killer. He's reliving his greatest hits. He is, if he has tapes about the Zodiac killer, he's like reliving the moment. Also, why would he confess? It makes no sense. Why would they confess to being the killer? That's ton dumb. But there's reason. A year later, in a, on August 1992, Alan was found dead from a suspected heart attack. The reason he may not be the killer is because Alan's DNA was compared to the 2002 DNA, and it was not a match. Although, it is said that Alan had other people lick his stamps for him. Alan's fingerprints were tested against the Paul Stein fingerprints, which again wasn't a match. They also had Alan go under handwriting analysis, but again wasn't a match. He also didn't match the sketch of the Paul Stein killing. 
Our last theory is by Harvey Hines, who believes Lawrence Kane, Lawrence Kane K was the, was the Zodiac. Kane was in a car accident in 1962, which which had brain damage, influencing which influencing in his behavior. One psychologist claimed Kane loses the ability to control self gratification. His name can also be seen in the My Name Is cipher, and is. And in that cipher, there are three eights with circles around them. Three times eight is twenty-four, and Cain was born in nineteen in nineteen twenty-four. The Zodiac's second um, victim, Darlene Farron, her sister said that Cain followed and harassed Darlene in the weeks leading up to her murder. Don Folk said the cop who Don Folk, the cop who may have seen the the killer, looked at the third from seen look said the man looked thirty-five to forty-five years old. Kane was 45 at the time. He also said through the years and hundreds of pictures, Kane looked like looked like looked the most like the man they saw. Kane also lived six minutes away from the Paul Stein cab. An excerpt from the Vallejo um, police report and an, F, an investigation has been placed on Kane in the locales where several of the Zodiac's victims either lived or were killed. In 1970, Kane moved to South Lake Tahoe, and that was a year of possible Zodiac. The Zodiac victim killing we didn't even state before had disappeared. She worked at the same hotel as Kane. On the night of March 20th, 1970, 1970 on, on Highway 132, Kathleen Johns and her baby were tricked into riding in the Zodiac's car. After entering the car, the Zodiac told Johns he was going to kill her and throw her baby out, out after her. Wait. Threw her... And throw her... Ah, out after her. As Zodiac was about to make a turn, Johns jumped out of the car and ran into a nearby field with her baby and escaped. Despite some believing this is an unconfirmed Zodiac encounter, other believes the letters un- confirmed his- this incident. And quotes, so I have, so I now have a little list. A Zodiac letter said, quote, so I ha- now have a little list, starting with the woman plus her baby that I gave an interesting ride. The re- End quote. The reason I added this encounter is because, unlike most Zodiac survivors, um, this one had extended face time with Zodiac, and when shown a lineup of photos, John Sanders reportedly able to pick out the one who tried to kill her. It was Kane. The, some evidence that Kane is in- innocent is that Kane's handwriting wasn't a match to the Zodiac's, and he matches the Paul Stein sketch, but not the large face heavy set like the last three. So that's all the information I have. Who do you think from the three people, we the three theories we saw, who do you think did it? I actually really, hmm, that's weird. The last one they said was about 35 to 45 years old, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they said the actual killer looked about 25 to 30? Mm-hmm. So that's weird. Personally, I believe I believe it was Arthur Lee Allen, and then after the first three killings, um, either Kanan or someone else started copycatting him, or they teamed up and he stopped killing, and a, some someone else started killing for him. Actually, that's smart. I didn't even think of that. So maybe they didn't want one of them to get caught. So they had someone else kill for them, so the other one didn't get caught or something like that. Yeah, because it doesn't... I don't care how much of a glow-up you had. You cannot go from a 45-year-old, 225-pound, brown-haired man to a 35-year-old, heavy-rimmed glasses, crew-cut, red-haired man. I don't care how much of a glow-up you had. Yeah. That is not possible. Mm, probably not, yeah. You can't just go blind in glasses. Mm-hmm. So that's all the information I have. Do you have any last thoughts or anything? Uh, not really. The last one kind of was suspicious. I think the last one might have done it, too. Uh, that's about it. Alright, so... Again, I am Savannah, and this is... Hello. And I guess we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.